Good evening, Twitch. Welcome to episode three of Birth of a World, the online interactive podcast in which we go through the process of creating a world for tabletop role-playing games and kind of going over what goes on behind the DM screen in between sessions. Uh, to anyone who is in, currently logged in and in the chat, uh, this is an interactive stream, so if you want to ask questions, you're welcome to do so. And uh, if we get to a point where I'm trying to make a decision and I'm looking for some input, uh, I'll be polling you guys for kind of what you think. So let's get started. Uh, at the last session, we drew this basic kind of low fidelity map of the area where our adventure, our first adventure at least, is going to take place. Uh, you could, if you watched the last video, you'll see we actually, I actually went back and uh, redid a bit of this to kind of clean it up a bit. Um, so just to briefly go over the area, we are in a mount, we are in a mountain town um, between the Black Hills and Copperholm uh, along this railroad path here. And it's a mining village. They mine a tin ore, uh, which they rely on the export for um, to kind of fund their economy uh, and buy food and things like that. So what's happened in this town is that they, while digging, they kind of dug too deep and struck upon a magma elemental type creature. Um, the resulting attack killed a dozen miners and has made the mine too, too dangerous to venture into. Um, for quite some time. No ore means no money, means no food. Now the townspeople are starting to face starvation as a very real possibility. Enter the player characters who are taking the train from the Black Hills, to, from the Black Hills down to Copperholm uh, and have been waylaid, or sorry, they're going from Copperholm to the Black Hills, um, we said. They're going northbound um, on this railroad here, uh, as indicated. Um, and they the train is stopped by an avalanche. Basically, uh, a whole pile of snow has fallen from the mountains and bluff above town and blocked the railroad tracks. As a result, the party are now stranded in the town of Tincliff, the village of Tincliff here. Um, uh, so within the town of Tin within Tincliff, uh, we see we've kind of plotted out some very basic information. There's a mill that grinds up the stone to extract the ore. There's a train station, naturally. We have the mine entrance, and we have whatever good fantasy city needs, a tavern. Uh, switching over to our description here. Uh, we've kind of been writing out all the things that go on in this um, region, in this first adventure. Our setting is still called Red Potato, for lack of a good name yet. Um, we decided that the world is mostly Earth-like and has an industrial level of technology powered by magic uh, powered by magic, but that magic is bulky and complicated, so we won't have any sleek, tight machines um, like you would see in a more modern or futuristic setting, but rather big, clunky, kind of uh, pre-early industrial era steam engine -y type things. So we came up with uh, locomotives, but no cars, basically, to kind of help illustrate that point. Um, so we started going through kind of what goes on in our first adventure here. Um, I see that both my text windows are streaming in parallel. Let me just uh, fix that. Sorry about that. This streaming software is not the greatest. That still didn't work. OK, hold on. Delete, add window, world creation checklist. Okay, so sorry about that. Um, so we're currently working through the world creation checklist, uh, which kind of is going to be an out serve as an outline for the first part of this series, at least. Uh, we've gone over tech level, local geography. Um, we've identified two neighboring kind of states, um, namely the city of Copperholm and the, the Black Hills, which is kind of a a region of some kind, we're not really sure. Uh, we've got our first hook and we've started identifying our first personality in line with uh, the whole first adventure thing here. So our starting location is Tincliff. Our first adventure site is the abandoned mine, uh, or the evacuated mine, I would say. It's not really abandoned. Our first NPC ally we came up with is going to be one of the townspeople. He's a young man 
uh, who is a tavern employee, um, and his brother worked in the mine and was killed when they released the elemental. He works as a bartender, and when the party meet him, he will offer to let them into the mine uh, in hopes that they can help restore the town's source of prosperity. Excuse me. Source of prosperity. <clears throat> uh, so let's see here. What else we got that we need that we need to know about? Um, the people in this town are all uh, the working class people in this town. At least are all tieflings. However, we decide that it's all owned by a wealthy dwarven cartel, uh, which may come into play in perhaps our second adventure. Um, we also said that if we don't meet um, the young man who is our first ally, uh, we will instead meet an older person uh, being healed in the church. Um, who is one of the mine workers and also will offer to let the party into the mine. So for today's session, we're going to be talking about this mine. Um, this is really going to be our first adventure site, the first bit of actual action that uh, our characters will see once they're done talking to the townspeople. Um, it doesn't matter which of the two characters lets them into the mine because they're going to be going in alone. Neither of these characters are combat worthy um, to any extent. They're both commoners. So they won't be they won't be going into the mine at all. Um, they might give the party a vague suggestion of a map, but uh, unless the party specifically ask for a map with details, uh, we're not going to give it to them. An interesting point, though, is uh, when you're at the table, if your party are being really prepared, we'll say um, I don't want to say picky, but prepared, uh, and they want things like, well, it's reasonable to assume that the townspeople would have a map that they could give us. Um, you can just kind of sketch out something quickly. I always have paper handy when I'm at the table um, to help define things. So for anyone who's joined us in the last few minutes here, um, this is an interactive podcast. You're encouraged to ask questions or make suggestions as I go through the creation process. Um, additionally, I will be polling the audience for input uh, a few times throughout the evening. So let's go over to our uh, scenario plan now. Uh, so we talked about this, um, this is what we talked about a bit towards the end of the last session, uh, which is kind of our flow chart for the first adventure here. So the party arrive in town, they can explore and go to the various points within the town. At the church, they'll meet the wounded miner who will explain the town's story, um, as I described it a minute ago. Um, at the tavern, we'll meet an NPC who also explains the story. Either of them lets you in the mine, so now we go into the mine. Now, normally for a large adventure location, um, you'll want to do a graph just like this to kind of help you plan out the flow of things, the flow through rooms. Uh, so if I pull up a new file, that's not what I want, new default. Um, let's see. I... I'm having an issue with my inks with Inkscape. Just a minute. Nope, still wrong window. Bah. Okay, I need to get new streaming software. Apparently, there we go. Okay, so as I was saying, sorry, I thought you guys could see this. Um, you arrive in town, you explore the town, you wind up at the church or the tavern. We kind of have these arrows here showing how things are connected and they'll offer you to let you in the mine, and then you go into the mine. So this is what I was trying to show um, before. So now, close this. Now I've got our new document, okay. So now this is going to be the actual what's going on inside the mine. So let's just label this here. All right, so inside the mine. So what are we going to know? We're going to want, so let's say this is going to be, we want this to be a short encounter, right? So this is going to be just like a one session, one session mission. It's going to be a one session mission. We're going to have, say, maybe, so exactly how many encounters is right obviously depends on what system you're using. Um, I'm most familiar with Pathfinder, although we'll probably be doing more fifth edition in this stream. Um, Either way, I'm going to assume combat moves at about the same speed, so we'll say we're going to do three-ish encou three encounters. And there's going to be a few traps uh, and one boss. 
So the boss um, is obviously going to be our uh, magma elemental. Um, traps can be something like a collapse slash cave in. Uh, maybe a uh, runaway equipment. Mine's not being safe places after all. Um, any other good traps the chat wants to suggest, feel free to chime in. Um, so have a collapse, cave in, maybe some runaway equipment, or maybe um, some gas, we'll say. So, you know, you hear about, right, in the mine you have the canaries go in first, and if there's methane or something like that that's going to poison you, um, that can happen. Uh, for combat encounters, we probably want to keep the theme of kind of... We want to warm the party up to fighting uh, the magma elemental, kind of give them an indication as to what they're facing against. So maybe we have a smaller elemental um, or some other rock monster. Um, and this can vary, right? We can kind of plot several encounters but not necessarily use them all. So that kind of defines what's going to go on inside this mine, inside this mission. Let's talk about um, areas within it. So we have the entranceway. Uh, and we're going to say right away that that entranceway is going to fork and we'll have a uh, kind of storage or kind of staging area. On one side we'll have the staging area with storage and rest workers. And the other side we'll have the, um, we'll have a um, basically just the main mine shaft. Okay. And we're going to have two er We're going to have a couple areas of mine shafts. So I'm going to call this one shaft A. And this one will be actually that's stupid. Let's try and keep things diverse a bit here. We have a mine shaft, and let's say we have a cavern. Um, probably a cavern that's been excavated by the miners. So you have your mine shaft. You have your cavern. What's some other rooms you might encounter in a mine? Uh, and if anyone in the chat wants to suggest something. Otherwise, mineshaft, cavern, let's get these connected. Point-to-point uh, point lines. And we'll say the staging area also connects to the cavern. And so we see we kind of have some branching paths now, and then we can do uh, shaft C and B. More kind of in-between areas. Uh, and let's put something, some area that's naturally hazardous. Maybe instead of the gas or something like that, we have a magma pool. We have a magma flow that goes nicely with the fact that we let loose a magma elemental. Maybe it's been melting stone or something like that in the area. Uh, so we can have that encountered if you go one way, and if you go the other way, uh, maybe we'll encounter a chasm, uh, like a, basically a big hole in the earth. Um, that they probably will have to get across somehow. So we have kind of these flow that we're developing through the place, um, and then we'll decide where the encounters are going to go. Um, either way, these all will all converge at the uh, the lower staging area, which will be kind of a safe place. Safe-ish, not perfectly safe. We don't want them people taking an extended rest um, in the dungeon, obviously, because that would just ruin uh, any semblance of balance. Um, and we'll do uh, more shaft. And then finally, we'll do the boss chamber. Um, it's important if you're going to have a big combat encounter, like a boss fight, that you kind of set up the room as a very explicit arena. Um, you're going to have to want, you're going to want space for both the party to maneuver around and to prevent the uh, enemy from getting just immediately cornered. Um, something that will happen a lot is the party will just kind of quickly encircle the enemy and stab it to death uh, with very little difficulty if you don't give it enough room to move. But this way, 
If it's an explicitly designed chamber, maybe there's some terrain that makes it difficult for the party to close to melee range. Um, if you have melee characters, that gives the ranged character the chance to shine. Uh, uh, if you, um, that's a good example. Uh, if you have a, like a pit or something, then you can have the boss throw the party around and try and knock them into the pit, add a bit of hazard to it. Uh, but yeah, just really an explicit chamber. And if you think about video game dungeons, this is basically the same kind of structure, right? This is Dodongo's Cavern or any of a number of video game dungeons, really. Um, so once you've got your rooms kind of figured out uh, and you've got your flow sorted, uh, now we can go about actually making our uh, dungeon, drawing our dungeon map. So just give me a second to get things set up here. Let's see if we want, what do we want? Does this do my pages? I don't think it does. No. Okay, so I'm just going to make the new um, thing as a new layer over top of the existing one. So, pull up my layers thing. Okay, so now we can, this way we can reference this easily uh, while we're drawing the map. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on some grid because uh, we want grid. Um, this grid looks fine, I think. It's a very fine grid. Um, this will do, you know. Uh, I personally like using hexes, but that's hard to do in an editor like this. So uh, we're just going to go with grid. Um, like this here. So for simplicity's sake, I'm going to say that uh, this is going to be a mine with maybe only a couple layers, a couple levels to it. Um, but let's start. Uh, oh, what am I going to do here? Let's start drawing some shapes. Just freehand, I guess. Why am I not? Why is my freehand tool not selecting? hand. All right, cool. Sorry about that. I'm having some issues with my editor tool. Um, so let's say we start kind of off in, I'm just going to randomly say up here in the northwest quadrant. And just have like a room like that. And uh, we should really figure out what our grid scale is going to be like. I need to do something about this grid here. Um, da, 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 Sorry for the delays here. This is getting the process figured out. Um, I don't really have much time to sort this ahead of time, so. All right, you know what? Let's turn the grid off. I've decided we're, go we're gonna go gridless here. We'll draw this freehand and then we'll figure out uh, roughly how big these rooms ought to be. Uh, so, we, so we have our entrance area here. And then we said that was going to connect uh, so what did we say? We said that was going to connect directly to our staging area and our mine shaft. So maybe we have the room that kind of branches. Goes this way, this way, like so. Um, and inside, I know it's just kind of drawing vague blobs here, but uh, oh, this is how rooms get made. It all starts out with a vague blob. So we'll have this room kind of squarish, like maybe it's been quarried out. And then it's got this tunnel going this way. All right, so that's going to be our staging area over here on the left. Uh, continuing on, we said that uh, first area is just going to be a mine shaft. So straight up over this way, and maybe they're following the ore veins, so it kind of curves back down. Like so. Cool. Um, we're not thinking too hard yet about where our encounters are going to be, but off the top of my head, I'm going to say maybe, uh, maybe we have an equipment trap here. Uh, let's just make our text a bit smaller. That is not what I wanted. Ah. Equipment trap, 
which is a fancy word, which is a fancy way of saying malfunction. Since the mine's in the middle of town, we can say that uh, we're going to be lowered into the mine on a lift. Probably just a plank on a winch kind of deal. Um, chat, you are quiet tonight. It troubles me. So, uh, let's see. So what do we say? We have this, and that goes to the cavern. Right, so our mine shaft kind of... Actually, you know what? Let's... Uh, Let's put a little English on this on this section of tunnel here. I feel like it's a bit boring uh, as it is. So let's uh, make it kind of do this. Maybe snake around a bit more. Um, like that. Uh, this guy too. Let's lose that section of line and draw a different one. Just and maybe we'll put a few dead ends in here just to spice things up a bit, but uh, let's not worry about it too much. And then we're going to curve back around, and here we'll have our cavern, and these will just kind of be connected at the back of it, like so. Maybe we came across the side of it. I know I didn't draw any exits from that, but that's okay, because the cavern's going to be our connector between levels 1 and 2. So in the cavern, since it's a big open space, we're going to have our first combat encounter. Um... Uh, let's see, I need to do something about grid getting some grid lines on here. Uh, I might wind up doing it between videos just because I think that's going to be kind of boring. Um, so in our first, so our cavern's going to be our first combat encounter. Let's, draw, let's think about some uh, terrain elements we can add to make it more interesting. I don't know what's up with my tool right now. Close you. Okay. So in the cavern, we're going to add some, some stalagmites here. The first combat encounter, we want to be pretty easy on the players. So what these stalagmites are going to do is going to kind of provide some cover from the entrance, um, cover on this side of the room. Yeah. So we're going to have stuff that they can kind of hide behind um, so that they can get a look at the enemy. We're not looking to like terrify the party necessarily. Um, so, and since we have stalagmites, we should probably have some water here. So maybe we'll go like that and make a pool at this one end. Since I drove this through it that way, let's just say we got a pool there. Um, let me zoom in and close this off so I can do 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 do. Ba ba ba. You and you. You can let me flood fill this thing. Nope. Okay. Well, ah, there we go. Okay, cool. Um, so we have a pool with water, and we'll say that the way down from here uh, is going to be a man-made hole uh, it's gonna be a man-made hole we they cut through the floor here to go deeper um, they cut through the floor here to go deeper into the dungeon or into the dungeon yes it's not technically a dungeon it's a mine shaft um, they cut through the floor here to go down to the second level um, to excavate more ore so there's kind of our first level. Um, again, depending on system, you'll want to vary the scale a bit. I'm going to make some grid lines uh, after this video and overlay them so that for future map drawings, we can have a proper grid scale. Um, the things you think about uh, afterwards, right? OK, so we've got that. Just going to uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. 
group this up so I can move it around. All right, cool. Um, so that's kind of level one, level two now. Um, so we know it's accessed via a square cut shaft, so let's just draw that now. All right, and now I can go from here. Uh, so let's see, what did we say? We said cavern and then shaft C and shaft B. Okay, so we'll have a lower half to the cavern, that's the bottom of this, and then the shaft will split again into two paths. And so kind of each level will split into uh, and rejoin. Uh, so let's, let's see. So we've got our shaft here and here's our cavern now. And we've got one path going that way and one path going that way. And kind of like, it's just, they just dug straight down into kind of a corner of the dungeon uh, and tunnel along. Um, so we said we got two shafts either way and then those go one goes to a magma flow and one goes to a chasm. So let's draw that. Uh, in my head, I'm thinking the magma flow and the chasm might be uh, connected. So maybe they kind of go uh, along like this, roughly on an angle like that, cutting across the mine. Uh, in which case, we're going to be over here. And then we're going to have this chasm. And this chasm is going to kind of go over here maybe end uh, abruptly and then continue on. Obviously the miners will have had to have bridged this chasm at some point, so maybe the bridge fell away. Uh, we can say we've got kind of an edge here. Uh, uh, and we can label this with a, as a, uh, we can label that as the former bridge. Uh, we can get rid of this now. Let's rotate that guy. Former bridge. So that's going to be a simple challenge for the party to overcome, right? They've, there's a whole, there's a gap in the floor. You can jump over it. You can use magic and fly. You can make a bridge. Or you can leave and go around if you've got absolutely no way to get the party across it. One thing I like to do, though, is just kind of put a challenge like this out there that you know a clever person would be able to overcome and leave it. Just, just like, put that challenge there and drop the pen. You're done for that. You're done for that challenge. Let the party figure out, once they come upon it, kind of how they're going to take care of dealing with that piece. Now, on the other side, uh, we said we would have a chasm, a lava flow cavern to deal with, and that this would be another combat encounter, most likely. So, let's draw kind of... I want. I said I want this lava to be flowing into the chasm, so I'm going to go over here, and there's actually going to be a lava waterfall over here. So the room goes that way because we need to all join up in the end. And like that. That looks nice. Okay. Um, our lava flow itself is going to be kind of over here. And we'll say it's coming out of a wall up here. There's just a wall that's slowly melting away. Um, possibly with some very like flowy lava and going that way. Cool. Do, 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 do. Flood fill, red, cool. All right, so there's our lava flow, such as it is. Uh -huh. And this is gonna be our second combat encounter. This one is definitely gonna be a little lava elemental. So I'm actually gonna note this here, so. That's going to be warm up enemy number two in a slightly more hazardous environment. That room's got liquid magma in it. It is going to be scorching hot. Uh, if your system has high temperature rules, that's a good time to kind of look those up. We also have this nice kind of water and fire thing going on here because up here we've got water where we encounter our first elemental. Maybe that one's more of a rock based elemental, less, maybe it's cooled off a bit. Uh, I'm actually going to put a note here.
and maybe uh, sometimes when you cool magma off, it's brittle. So maybe uh, the enemy in there is weaker. Whereas this one, this one's at full power. Um, so the one you encounter, the one they party encounter in this room, they'll have to deal not only with the high temperatures, but now they've got an angry, lively feeling uh, elemental coming at them. I'm just going to uh, adjust something here. This, this, you need to stroke. Or not. Form a bridge. You'll see why I'm doing this in a minute here. Flood fill, black. All right. Now we get the impression that this is actually a chasm. It was bothering me that it was just more white space. Um, so we have our lower level uh, with one uh, kind of challenge, pseudo trap, if you will. Um, you could easily replace this with like a collapsing bridge or a collapsing floor if you want something that's more difficult. Um, but since this is meant to be a starting encounter for some lobby characters, we're just going to have, there's a big gap, get across it, right? Simple, figure out what your character can do, how to use your abilities kind of thing. Um, You'll notice that we've effectively made this combat encounter with the lava with the lava flow uh, completely optional. That's fine. Um, this will give you a lit experience. This will give you a bit more, perhaps. But we want the players to get the feeling like they're kind of in control. Um, if they come in this way and want to go out the other way, we're just going to drop this encounter altogether. Basically, once the boss is dead, all the other enemies will go away. You can scroll a town portal out if that's how you'd rather do it or you can let the party walk out if they want to see what the unexplored paths contain. Uh, let's see. So we have our chasm, our lava flow, we have a lower staging area, a tunnel, and then uh, the boss room. So let's get back to drawing here. So right after these, we're gonna have kind of, gonna be our lower staging area. And again, maybe this is a cut stone room rather than the other ones. I just like using different line weights to kind of tell you roughly what's cut. Like this looks pretty clearly, right? You have a natural cap rough chasm and you have these like 90 degrees flat surfaces. This was clearly artificially cut. Don't need to write it down. Just look at the map and you can see, okay, this is cut stone as opposed to natural stone. And here we probably have like smooth curves. That's like melted stone. Um, so we have that and then we have our we have our shaft, which is going to run like this, we'll say. And our boss encounter, I'm going to put in kind of a, uh, let's put it in kind of a Y-shaped area that we'll call part of a mine shaft. So over here, we've got kind of a Y-shaped, I mean more of a V-shaped really. But it's kind of this big fan. I'd probably make this slightly bigger, but since we don't have a grid yet, it'll do. Um, yeah, let's yeah, let's make it bigger. But I don't like how small that came out. So we have our corridor, which goes like this. Yeah. Okay. And then we have our mine shaft. And this is going to be our boss arena. So we want it to be slightly wider than it ought to be, but maybe there's a big glop of ore there or something like that. I'm not a geologist. Um, I just play one on TV. No. Um, so that's going to be, so let's see here. We have our so we have our breather, which is the lower staging area. We have our boss area, and we have kind of a pre-boss tunnel um, where we can optionally put in some other encounter just to slap the players around a bit and make them be on their toes. So without going into any system specifics, um, this is a basic first dungeon, right? Kind of pull out and see here, we've got two levels. Uh, we've got really about four or five actual rooms, uh, but several points where there's challenges. Um, so as far as actually populating this dungeon goes, um, I'm gonna wait for the fifth edition uh, monster manual, which is coming out next week. Um, 
and I will have that by the time of the, by next Wednesday. Um, I'll have my copy of that, so I'll look through and see if I can find some suitable monsters um, that we can inject into this area. Uh, but this is going to be a, kind of our first uh, our first encounter. This is this looks really small compared to you know a, a mine that a town's been living off of for years. But maybe maybe you, on the entrance lift ride down, you go past levels that were like previously mined out, and this is just a new shaft. That makes a bit sense, right? It's clearly a dangerous area of the underground, but with this lava flowing and a chasm and all that, uh, you're not going to... This isn't going to be the first part of the mine, but it is the deepest part, and this is where the problem starts. Um, so what are we going to... Let's add some details to these rooms here. So in the staging area room, uh, we're just going to want to add a few kind of boxes, whatever. I have a long kind of grayish bench and we'll say uh, I always like to put in a bit of set dressing on my maps even if it's not super consequential it does just kind of help you remember what you've got here uh, I'm going to draw these boxes and then I will explain what they're, what they're going to be one thing I kind of wish Inkscape would let you do is uh, position things oh we're at the halfway point so anyone who's joined us uh, since we started here, this is an interactive podcast. And although people in chat are being very quiet this evening, uh, you can you are invited to ask questions, uh, and I will attempt to answer them uh, to the best of my ability. You can also make suggestions if you think uh, you can come up with a way to kind of improve uh, the layout. So let's see here. Uh, so this one's going to be lockers. And then we're going to have a bunch of ch those chairs. And maybe these become relevant, maybe they don't. Uh, chairs, and we want, uh, let's say this is more lockers. Except that this, these lockers have our trap in them. Let's get rid of this thing now. I think we're... So this is our staging room. So the room is natural stone. Uh, there's panels, there's, bank, there's a bank of lockers. Uh, the lockers give you treasure, um, which is an important thing here, right? There's loot. And the lockers, both sets of lockers, um, as reward for the trap, basically. And it's like, you survived a trap, congratulations, here's some money. Um, that sort of thing. Other bits of loot. Um, we're going to have some more kind of storage equipment positioned up along the wall here, uh, near the second shaft. And uh, you might be thinking to yourself, well, what's the, what treasure is there going to be in these guys' lockers? The answer is it probably belongs to the townspeople. And if you have a paladin in your party, he might kind of object to you just stealing this stuff. Um, since we, the game usually wants us to give uh, some kind of monetary or equipment rewards uh, to the players... Maybe we'll uh, we'll say that if the players take the stuff, that's the reward, or if they give it back, they get paid. Um, the townspeople like thank them for recovering their gear and stuff like that, and they wind up with maybe slightly less value if you want to make it kind of edgy. Uh, but yeah, they wind up with just they wind up getting some uh, loot out of it anyway, even if they don't choose to steal. Uh, but of course, as fantasy adventurer archetypes, they are quite likely to steal. Uh, and this is again. And we'll do bench. Um, important, of course, is this is hostile territory, so you're not going to have. Uh, you're not going to be able to like take an extended breather 
in this room, right? You're not going to be able to like sit down, have a snack, and whatnot, because there is a pissed off magma elemental in the next room. And uh, let's actually let's just um, put a lava, put some lava in the next room too, just like that. Cut off part of the room. The boss, being made of lava, could of course cross over uh, into the magma, maybe to escape a particularly strong melee attacker. Um, that's one option, right? The boss can use that kind of lava pool to escape the party. Um, so it can be kind of tactical about it. Um, the other thing is, again, if it's a room with lava, it's probably uh, intensely hot. And I should actually make a note of that uh, about each of these rooms that they are. Uh, rooms with intense heat. That is not what I wanted. There we go. So there's intense heat in both of those rooms. This is kind of the layout for our first uh, dungeon now. We've got a pretty solid layout here. Uh, I'm going to come back and I'll put grid lines over it so that we have a proper sense of scale, um, assuming playing D&D um, &D or Pathfinder, uh, or a similar kind of system that's based on square grids that are five feet. Um, so let's see, what else can we talk about for this first encounter? So this is basically it, right? You go in, you beat up the enemy, the townspeople are grateful, and they give you money. Um, you've made a friend now. You've helped the townspeople out, so you've got several friends. Let's jump back over to our uh, world creation checklist business. Oh, it's doing that stupidness again. Okay. Uh, go away. Actually, I don't want to delete this one. Okay. Sorry, that's annoying. Um, so uh, we are basically got all our parts to our first adventure now. We have our st starting location, we have our first adventure site, and we have our first ally. Now, uh, after we run that session, uh, we'll be, we talk about now what's, what's the second adventure going to be like? What are we going to be like when we start pulling back the veil a bit? Um, it's probably a, a big enough topic to put it on its own video next time, but let's talk about it now anyway, because I've got the time. Um, so your second adventure, um, you're probably going to want to reuse the first location. So this is the, where the party will be based for at least this adventure. Say the, they still haven't quite cleared the tracks or whatnot. Um, but you've party have proven themselves to be helpful, and now maybe the townspeople have something else they want to do. So we're going to reuse this first location and move a bit further out of town. Um, we also want to kind of take the training wheels off. So. Our first scenario was kind of engineered just so that our level one characters can get comfortable with themselves. Uh, next, maybe we want to risk killing someone if you're that kind of DM. It's up to you. Uh, but yeah, we're going to want to go a bit further out of town. So let's jump back to uh, the... Oh, let's save this first, actually. That's important. Uh... Um... Saved. Okay. So let's go back to Tincliffe. And over here, close you. Okay. Uh, okay. So back to Tincliffe now. We've kind of, we've dealt with the business, the mine. Where else can we go? So we can go up to the bluff. We can go upstream, up the canyon somewhere. We can go back down the railroad, um, or we can kind of have this other valley here that we could theoretically be exploring. Uh, we're going to say let's go up the valley. So let's see. My line's still set to be okay. I'll fix the lines later. It's kind of tedious. Uh, so we continue this valley up, and we're going to say it's a box canyon that ends at like a wall of ice or something like that. But it can go up a bit further than that, maybe, and then we'll kind of close it off. 
So now we've got the tin cliff, and uh, we have to grab the river, of course, and uh, extend this out here, too, and maybe the river kind of... What we want to do is, I think we're going to do another cave-type setting. Um, so we'll put the Sorcerer River as being a cave. What happened to my line here? Sorry, let me just draw another quickie line. I don't know what happened to that line. It'll forever be a mystery. So at the end of the Box Canyon here, uh, we said we're going to have a... Uh, let's make the text bigger again. Da, 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 da. Uh, okay, there we go. So we've got ice cliffs here, kind of further up the uh, bluff. And then inside the ice cliffs, we will have a... Uh, a, a frozen cavern. Okay. So one thing to be clear about with a minor location like this as your starting place is you're going to want to do no more than two adventures specifically here. This is the environment where the players get used to themselves, get used to their abilities, and then they move on, right? They get to be heroes and they move on and we start, start we'll start exploring after the, on the third adventure, We'll start exploring the world, its themes, and what the place, what it really means. So for our next adventure site, though, I think we're going to go to Frozen Cavern. Um, again, I'm going to fix the strokes later. But what is our hook going to be for our second adventure? Hmm? What is our hook going to be? Let's add that window back. Okay. So we've got our first two allies, and these are going to continue to be our allies and kind of help us get information about what's going on in the area. But let's talk about second adventure hook now. What's going to make the party go into the uh, go into the frozen cavern? And chat, if anyone wants to suggest anything, you are super welcome to do so. Uh, let's say, well, let's let's appeal to their greed. You know, maybe they were altruistic and didn't give and didn't steal the equipment from the mine, and as a result, they're left with basically whatever the whatever loot could, could have come off those monsters. Um, classic example being I once had a monster who was basically made of gemstones. It was a similar to this a kind of elemental made of rocks. Uh, only those rocks happened to be pretty invaluable, and so after they killed it, they took out a pickaxe and chipped it to bits uh, and sold all its little bits for lots of money which was nice. But let's say, so, the mine entrance was a bit under curve for treasure. So let's say um, there is treasure in the frozen cavern. Uh, how do they know, how do the, so let's say um, the, young ta the young town's person, who needs a name, doesn't he? I'm just gonna call him Steve. Steve, the tiefling bartender. Um, so Steve has heard stories uh, gold and a magic and a magic sword. Um, obviously, if you have a party that doesn't use swords, um, especially considering this is an age where firearms are a thing, um, you could obviously replace the magic sword with a more appropriate thing um, fitting your characters, which you now know because you're on your second adventure. Uh, so once you've got your... So you know your characters and you know you can kind of make tailor this to them. You know, maybe uh, you've got a fighter who's set up and he's kind of sore because he spent his budget wrong, but unlikely. But whatever, so there's a magic weapon in there somewhere, um, along with a whole bunch of gold. Um, why is this there? One thing I'm always strict about is stuff has to make at least a little bit of sense, right? It has to be a lick of sense. Why is there gold and a magic sword in there? Um, maybe there used to be orcs. 
where orcs is a placeholder for whatever you want, but orcs works for me. Used to be orcs in the cavern. They'd raid the town. Um, years ago. Years ago, militia went in, killed, wiped them all out, so they're not raiding the town anymore. Um, but uh, they, but the militia suffered heavy losses. And nearly froze to death. So they didn't bother trekking back with all the gear. With all the stuff. Um, people have since moved on, and so they won't really miss any of the items that are there. And the sword belonged to one of the militia men. See? Easy. That's how we have now an adventure hook makes sense. And now we've, we've expanded a bit of the story. Okay, Tin Cliff was ready, used to be raided by orcs with some frequency. Until maybe some leader came around and he had a magic sword and maybe he was an adventurer. He rallied a townsfolk militia and they went in and they hacked all the orcs to bits. Um, but in doing so, they people died, including this leader who uh, used to have the sword. Specifically... Uh, So maybe the militia leader was an adventurer who was just passing through. Anyway, they hacked them all up, and now all the crap's stuck in there. Um, and there may be some orc survivors. So this is probably going to be more, a more fighty kind of um, side adventure. Uh, but I think... We're going to leave it there for now. Chat seems to be um, not particularly active this evening. Uh, so I'm just going to cut this uh, and then the next session we can talk about the second adventure um, as well as pulling back to region. So um, that will be the conclusion of the stream for tonight. Uh, so this uh, work and uh, the setting, the setting of Tincliff, the adventure in the Tincliff mines, anything really made um, associated with it can all be used freely under Creative Commons 4.0. Uh, all I ask is that you give credit to myself, Rob Hicks, um, aka Too Many Knives. If you would like to use this, I'd also like it if you tweeted it at me, at Too Many Knives, um, just so I know that it's you're using and I can help promote your thing uh, to anyone else watching the stream, uh, either live or on YouTube later. So um, with that it, I will say a good night, Twitch, and thank you for watching. This will be uploaded to YouTube uh, later tonight, probably, uh, if anyone missed the first half and wants to watch it. Good night.